Right, okay, once again, Happy New Year. Thank you for joining the Average Golfer in a week that is full of tailor-made testing. Lots of prompt being released right now. We're going through right through the M5 and the M6 range. It's been introduced uh, 1st of February um, of 2019. I'm now onto the M6 driver. Let's have a look at that from, from this side to start with. Get a bit of a close-up on that one. I'll throw some images up actually and uh, you can give me some opinions in the comments below on what you think in terms of looks. Um, we're going to do this review just a little bit different. We're going to talk inside here about how this thing looks, maybe talk through the tech spec from TaylorMade and then we're going to get out on the course and also collect some dry ball data and then back into here to discuss the findings from this whole review. So let's start off with the tech spec in terms of what are TaylorMade packing into this 2019 driver. It is all about speed injection and they're injecting the club face with these two red screws that we've seen that little bit of a uh, snippet from not so very long ago. Um, and how are they doing that? Well, basically each driver head will be individually tested. They're gonna try and get each driver head to as close to the legal limits of COR as they possibly can. And to do that, they feel like they need to test every club individually across a number of places across the club face and where required, they're injecting a resin that is gonna go and support certain areas to ensure you're getting the fastest possible ball speeds from right across that club face. So in really the biggest sweet spot that they've ever produced from a driver. The other thing that's different, we've still got, by the way, Twist Face is staying. Clearly, it has been a winner in terms of, uh, from Taylor May's perspective. So Twist Face technology is staying. It's going nowhere, it's in the two drivers, it's in the fairways, and it's also in the hybrid, which we'll get to very, very shortly. Um, other thing they've introduced here, and I'll have a close-up little uh, image for you of the bottom of the M6, and where they've introduced some extra weight and mass at the back of this club face. So it's a carbon sole with what they call inertia generator. And basically, that uh, slot at the very back there stores 46 gram of weight, and obviously it's very low and it's very far back and it is there for enhanced CG and maximum forgiveness. Um, it's also got the hammerhead technology that we've seen before and that along with the sort of speed injection as they're calling it into this club face is gonna produce their most forgiving driver, their fastest driver. We're gonna get some amazing results it sounds like and there's only one way to find that out and that's to get out on the course. But let's start off and get over to Four Golf Chester and start to do some testing of this product. Yes, yeah, so it's into Four Golf Chester for the first part of this test. And what this is gonna be is my first reaction to hitting this golf ball, or hitting this golf club rather. What I think it looks like at a dress, and I'm gonna hit some golf balls, and I'm gonna give you my immediate thoughts. And that's without the confusion of any data to back this up. I'll record some data later on, and we'll go through that at the end of this video. But for the time being, this is all about first impressions. And I have to say, that looking from the top of the club, and we touched on it briefly in the intro, this crown, this sort of muted matte finish, if you like, it's almost got the chequered flag, like a Formula One imprint, this carbon imprint looks like now, is, I think, really nice on the eye. One big thing Taylor made have done, and whether you liked it or not, this will be a, a big sway on this club, is that thick top band that, on the face itself, or on the crown, directly behind the ball, we had this white in the M1, M2 band strip. It went to silver in M3, M4. It's still that silver color, but it's been reduced down significantly. That's a big noticeable difference um, at address, but it frames the ball really well. I love the way it's a slider cutaway at the toe end of this club as well. And it sits, like I said, really nice at address. Next thing we've got to look at is twist face. Do you see any of it? And I mentioned this in last year's video. No, you don't. You cannot see anything other than a, what looks like a square club face. So there's no, we ain't seeing that. The, the, the differences in there must be minimal because you don't see it as a golfer. But let's hit some golf balls. It's a high launching ball. Don't forget, so we've got this uh, club set up, just a quick reminder, then it's nine degrees. Um, I'm using this Atmos stiff shaft in this club. First ball has gone off um, very well indeed. Let me hit some balls first and I'll give you my, my thoughts. As this is currently set up, 
in, even in this nine degree loft, it's incredibly high launching. It is going a long, long carry, but there's a little bit of downwind and uh, the numbers will confirm how long and how far this is traveling. Interesting thing is two balls, very, very straight. Always been the same in terms of twist face is uh, how do you, how do you spend the time? Someone's got to spend the time in sort of trying to work out does that work or not? And uh, it'll need a better man than me to prove that or not. But uh, first two balls and third, that's the best ball out of the lot. That's gone for miles. Very impressive. A couple of things to note, different sound from previous models. Um, I'd say slightly more muted sound. There ain't no sort of gunshot going off. The immediate feel out the club face is speed, is power, it's firing out there. Um, Distance wise, I have no idea what this thing is doing and that's what will get backed up with some dry ball data at the end of all this. So from here, the obvious thing is to take this out there on the golf course or see on the golf course and we'll hit some ball straight off the tee. <laughs> So a few drives in with the uh, M6 and I have to say again without the adjustability that comes with the M5 the current setup for me right now uh, I mean it's pretty much I'm more than happy with it to be quite honest with you I've always found that with the adjustability I end up in a pretty neutral position anyway uh, so for me the kind of uh, the neutral position that's set up in this M6 is pretty damn good. Ball flight is high. I think it's certainly aimed at uh, people who perhaps struggle in terms of launch off the tee. It's certainly firing a ball high up there. It's not overly windy today, but maybe in some uh, windy conditions out there on a links, then maybe the ball flight is a little bit too high. That'd be something to consider. In terms of performance, a lot of these tailor-made clubs have got a totally different sound and feel for me and it's a lot softer, it's a lot quieter, it's a lot more muted uh, and again that's something that I really like, not necessarily appeal to everybody but it's not that sort of gunshot going off um, but once again you know it's very difficult to pick fault with this golf club um, I'll let a few more shots out there on the range and then return into the warmth and we'll do a summary on this club Right, we've been on the course, we've got the dry ball data, everything we need to know so far about the M6 driver. And I say so far, I said it with the M5, I'm gonna do further testing on this club and get a better idea of whether or not a twist face has got some um, workings, is it actually working? And again, this injected resin in terms of ball speeds across the club face, I'm gonna have a closer look and see if we can identify if that is the case. Um, but for what we've got so far, out there on the course, really like this club out there on the course. I think it's the real environment, it's, uh, it's different acoustics in terms of sound and feel. And for me, really love the sound and feel. I love the performance. Once again, for the loft that this was set at, I can't believe the launch. These balls at the moment, and there's a couple more drivers that I'm gonna be testing in the next day or two. The ball flight on these things at the moment in terms of launch, are absolutely flying out there perhaps even like i said a little bit too high for me perhaps need just dropping down a little bit and that would again be by spending more time in terms of a perhaps even the shaft in this and also taking this down a little bit in terms of this nine degrees worth of loft so um back to the looks i suppose first of all as well i'll give you my opinion on the looks i much prefer the looks of the m6 and the m5 Let's start off with the M6, I suppose, first of all. I like the looks, I love the looks of the M6. Um, much more toned down. I love this um, 
weight system that is in the back the way it just the, the whole shaping of this uh, back end of this club i really like it it's really nice behind the ball and like i said for shelf appeal for me uh, i'd much more be drawn to the m6 than i would be to the m5 i like the cleaner look i don't like the adjustability and nuts and bolts that you often see in the adjustable drivers so the m6 real thumbs up in terms of looks like i said sound and feel is good Performance was good out there. Drive all data up on screen for you now for those of you people who like this. Uh, once again, you'll see carry number on average 246, but there's one out there banged out at 259, which was um, in terms of the two drivers, M6, M5, that was the longest carry, and that's a considerable carry distance for me as well. With a spin on it of one and a half thousand, the spin number is incredibly low. Um, high launch, incredibly low spin. Again, and I said this on the M5, those things would probably want uh, tweaking uh, either way on both of those numbers if you could. And I think that's what I would do if I had more time. Certainly look at the shaft in this uh, with this head type and try and uh, change those numbers a little bit to optimize performance. Once again, the number in and around the sort of 240 to 250 carry is where I am at. There's no difference in terms of uh, yardage gained there from any other drivers that I've used. Out there on the course, I hit it really well. I found it sort of, this word easy to use is an odd one because, but I just felt as though I put a nice smooth swing on it. There's plenty of ball speed off the face and plenty of performance in terms of carry distance because the ball speeds there averaging at just 140 ball speed is lower than what I've achieved with other clubs. But again, that carry distance at 246 is incredible carry distance. So all of these things put together, the club has performed exceptionally well. And like I said, out there on the course, I found it, and it's the wrong term to use. Easy to use is a stupid term, I know, but that's the only one that comes to my head. Nice, easy swing, get that ball somewhere around that club face, and it seemed to travel and, uh, and do pretty well. I'm gonna, oh, and once again, I'll make the same statements as before. Have I seen any noticeable difference in performance from M3 and M4 at this stage? Absolutely none whatsoever. No, I have to be honest and say that. Uh, however, I will be doing the relevant head-to-head -head videos going forward, and we'll try and pay closer attention to the differences between the two and see if we can identify the claims that TaylorMade have made in terms of the enhanced performance in the face in particular of the uh, the M6 and the M5. But that's all for a later date. Anyway, as ever, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Try to give you as balanced a view as possibly can as ever. So comments down below and let's have your thoughts on this one.